My name is Andrea Walter, and I'm with the Youth Services Department of the St. Louis County Library. I'd like to welcome you to this virtual author event for young readers. We are so fortunate to have the independent bookstore Novel Neighbor on board with us, and I highly recommend that you find them on their web, web platforms for purchases. They do have some signed copies of the books we're going to talk about available today, so be sure to check them out. I also want to give a huge shout out to HEC Media for helping us make this virtual author event a reality. But most importantly, I wanna welcome Amy Timberlake, our off featured author for today. Amy is the author of the Edgar and Newberry Honor winning One Came Home and is here to talk about the latest installment of her Skunk and Badger series, where a beautiful friendship forms between two unlikely animals. In the new book, Egg Marks the Spot, roommate Skunk and Badger set off on a camping expedition to find a very special rock, but they find much more than they bargained for. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today, Amy. I'm so excited to talk to you about your books. Well, thank you for having me. It's really yeah. exciting to be here and exciting to be in St. Louis, sort of. <laughs> so Amy, I really want to know where your idea for Skunk and Badger came from. I was writing a, another, um, another novel with a protagonist that was probably going to be around 13 years old. Well, she was. She had 13 years old. So I was doing another sort of book, I guess, like One Came Home. And in that book, um, I had a character who was young and um, she read a lot of bear books. I also, and I mean like bear as in the big animal. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so I started reading um, bear mythology, like any story that had a bear in it uh, from history, started reading bear stories from the west i started i read winnie the pooh i read paddington bear um and it was as i was reading winnie the pooh that i was really struck by those stories just how well crafted they were they were just beautiful little i mean i say the word little only in terms of they had nothing nothing extra yeah every word counted, they had an arc, they wrapped up beautifully. And I just thought, wow, it sort of blew me away because I actually was not as big a fan of them growing up. I don't know, I don't know if my parents really read those to me as a kid. It's funny because they read a lot of stories. And so I, I would be surprised if they hadn't, but I don't remember ever being struck by them like this. But anyway, I read that and I thought, well, what would it, what would happen if you, Amy, <laughs> tried to write a story like this? You know, something that had characters that you could have episodes with and you could have a series of episodes. So I wasn't thinking about a series. I was thinking about stories and like little nuggets kind of. Now these these are actually little novels, so maybe that tells you something about how I tell stories. <laughs> that I didn't come up with those beautiful little sh short stories, um, but that's where it started. Was just thinking about that, and when I was when I was saying, you know, how would you do? tell something like this. I wasn't thinking, how would you, Amy, write Winnie the Pooh? I was thinking about how would you tell this kind of story, but with your sense of humor, with the, the kind of stories that you, you know, just. So basically, it's me as a writer with my voice and telling stories uh, in that sort of way. Was there any difference in your approach to writing these books than your other books because it was kind of a challenge? So one of the challenges with these books was, okay, a couple of challenges. Number one, I had a thing about talking animals for as long as I could remember as a writer. I was just like, no, would never do that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, I kind of rant about this. 
And now I call them um, animals in sweaters because John Clausen <laughs> has done such a beautiful job, little cable sweater. They okay. are beautiful. I know, they're gorgeous. So I, I approached that problem. I was like, Amy, you can't say you never want to do it until you've tried it. And honestly, this was so much fun. I totally recommend it now. <laughs> Everybody should do this. So that's number one. And then the other thing was I was afraid of um, for a long time. And this isn't I've been working on this through the books like one came home. I thought that I couldn't write dialogue. And I knew that I was good at describing things. I, I knew that I was good at language, like the actual sound of language, and that I was good at voice or finding a voice. Um, so those were the, those were strengths, I thought, of my writing. But I thought, dialogue, I thought, oh, not so good at that. So over the years, I've done different projects to try to work on that. And uh, for instance, about six years ago, I took a playwriting course because if you write plays, you have no description yeah. and you just have to do dialogue. <laughs> so these books are have a lot of dialogue in them. They're almost they're almost as close to writing a play as I can imagine, except that um, except there is definitely narrative in there. Um, so that was another challenge that I was doing. I have at least one, maybe two burning questions that I really want to ask you about. Okay. Number one, are we ever going to know the secret behind skunk's affinity for chickens? No. Oh. I think anything is up in the air for discovery. All of these stories are told through Badger's third person narrative. Mm -hmm. So somehow it has to be important for Badger to find that out. There's a lot of mystery with the chickens. And I think that Skunk is a little protective of them, the even with Badger. You know, like he doesn't, he's not gonna, He's very loyal to his friends. He is. But so anyway. I... <laughs> so how is the writing of the third one going? What's that been like for you? It's really fun. And I've been enjoying it. I've also been enjoying telling jokes. So it's been a lot of fun and helpful during 2020 and helpful this year, you know, just to have something that's so joyful to work mm -hmm. on. This project has been fabulous and I don't know you know anytime I get any of the illustrations from John or whatever it's just such a such a boost holy smokes yeah they're that's just so be gorgeous fun. can you tell us about what that's been like yeah well this is um Badger at his table in the first book important rock work and that was the first one that I saw. And I obviously seen John's work before. It's Badger at his table. And, and Elise Howard, the, my editor, sent it by email. And I opened it up. And it was like, I just said, there's, there's Badger. There he is. He's always, I, he's always been there. That's exactly what he's always looked like. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe John Clausen has the connection with Skunk and Badger because he's Canadian and your stories are so full of the North Woods. Um, uh, I wonder if that's just kind of a natural outpouring of that. I don't know. I never thought of that, but you're right. Yeah, you're right. I know he likes to be outside. He's also an outdoor guy. So that's cool. So I gather that you like to be outdoors as well from what you write. Anyway, you write a lot about the natural world and um, your love of it is very evident. When did you develop that love and when did you decide to write about it? I just I've always been a kid who spent a lot of time outside. I my my um, my grandparents had a cabin by a lake when I was growing up. Um, my maternal grandparents um, and every weekend we drove up there and we we basically were left to run wild all all the time we were up there there was there was hardly 
I can't imagine anything happening to us except, you know, like falling off something (laughs) and hitting our head on a rock, you know, it's like all natural kind of, there were, anyway, so yeah, we just played outside all the time. Amy, could you tell us please, um, where did Skunk and Badger come from? Um, Did you create them? Are they people that you know? No, they are actually both parts of me. So Skunk is enthusiastic. He loves everything. He's interested in pretty much everything. He's particularly interested in chickens. Badger, he does important rock work. He's very serious. He's, he's kind of set in his ways. Uh, every day he gets up, he goes to his rock table. He looks at rocks and he decides whether they're rocks or minerals. And it's a good life. It works for him. And then one day there's a knock at his door, rap, 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 rap. And it is Skunk, who is this super enthusiastic, you know, fun character, but a lot of energy. And he is Badger's roommate. And yeah, so they are actually both parts of me. I I do important rock. I, I well now I call it this. It's funny. I I didn't call it important rock, my writing important rock work, but now since writing this book, I call my writing important rock work. So I do important rock work every day. I'm very serious about it. And then there's this other part of me that's like, hey, let's go outside. <laughs> let's look. You know, let's see what's going on with. I don't know, the ducks, the gulls, the the crow family, whatever. I also have a question about the bears, since bears were such an important part of the story developing. Your bears in the book are kind of uncivilized, right? How, how did that come about? How did you decide which animals were going to be more civilized than others? That just happened. But when they go into the woods... That's a different location. Oh. And so, especially, um, I think Skunk has this line where he, he's, he's a city skunk. He's always been in a city. So when he finally gets into the woods, he asks, are we officially in the woods? And because he, he wants to know if he's finally made it and they have. And one of the ways they sort of know is, um, There is a bear, but (laughs) I won't say any more about that. But initially, uh, yeah, I'll just say initially skunk doesn't actually think they really exist. So Amy, what do you want your books to say to your young readers? I guess if there's, if there's a, if there's a message or it, it would probably be something about how do two animals of completely different personalities come and likes and dislikes how do they how do they come together you know that would be the that would be the big thing overall what i what i'd really like is i wrote these as read alouds and i think of them as as something for everyone in the room Um, What I would like for kids and groups of people is for everyone, every age, to just have a fun time with these books. I'm hoping that you can have a great time reading this. If you're 90, I'm hoping you can have a great time reading this if you're, I don't know, nine or whatever. And if you're having it read to you before bed or whatever, I hope you can be six years old and having a good time too. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to create. It was more what I was thinking about. I can say it does make a great read aloud. I've, I've used it. Oh, (laughs) Oh, good. Good. That's excellent. Um, So can you tell me a little bit more about, you have that chicken reference book. Tell me how much you've used it to write your books and how that has affected these stories. Well, um, in, in the, in the first book in particular, the chickens really, a lot of different chickens come in and basically I, once I knew that the chickens were going to come in, I did not want just a little white chicken with 
red comb and whatever. And I knew that there were a lot of different kinds of chickens. Um, I, I didn't know a ton about them, but I knew that if I got an encyclopedia like this one by Frances Bassum, she's English and she's really actually very funny about her chickens. I knew if I did that, I could come up with some really interesting chickens. So I, I basically used the book to try to find all these good chickens to put in my, the chickens that invade the brownstone. Um, so do you write on purpose when you're writing? Do you write for a moral or for someone to come up with meaning from your stories? Or is that not something that you are conscious of as you write? I don't write with a, a meaning. I do a meaning in mind. I am trying to tell the best story I can. Literally, like I'm working at it the top of my at the top of my skill level whatever that is i'm i'm using it all to tell the best story i can and one of the things it does mean though is even though i'm writing about animals here i'm also i'm going to write about i'm going to give these animals true emotional life <laughs> as much as i can so, so what that means is when I was writing Skunk and Badger, I was not sure if I could come up with a way that Badger could apologize for what he had done. I, I don't think I'm giving anything away in a way that was convincing to me. I was, I was kind of worried about how that was going to end. I just thought, I don't know if I can, if I can get there because if it doesn't feel like good to me like I might accept it I I just wasn't I was gonna I was gonna toss the book <laughs> oh. so yeah I mean and I mean I I think that's just the way it goes is is that if it's not if it's not gonna be right I'm not gonna I don't want to do it especially when you're talking about the emotional relational aspect of these two very different characters coming together. Well, can you tell us just a little bit about where the title Egg Marks the Spot comes from? Oh, yes. Book one, page 54. You can, if you have the book at home, you can read it. So this is, I, I'm just gonna read you a really tiny short section. This is where Badger is showing Skunk his geological survey maps. So Badger told Skunk how he used maps on rock finding expeditions. Skunk gasped, rock finding expedition? What is that? Badger explained how he camped out. Under the stars, interrupted Skunk. Technically, yes, but with a picnic every day, interrupted Skunk again, I guess. I do eat outside. Skunk hopped from one foot to the other. What else? What else? So a badger explained how clues in the landscape led to a particular rock. Skunk slapped his paw on the map. Like X marks the spot? Sort of, yes. Then Skunk turned and said, Badger, what are we waiting for? <laughs> so so that's how that's how that that's where that comes from. And then because these are the stories they are, nothing goes as planned. Oh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I have one really quick question for you. Have you ever seen a wild badger? No. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> All right. Well, Amy, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I love your books. They're wonderful. And I hope everyone goes out and reads them. Be sure to check out Novel Neighbor if you want to purchase one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. At noon, a large yellow backpack sat in the front hallway. Badger jogged over to examine it. External frame, extremely adjustable. Thick straps with brass buckles held the lid in place. Two water bottle pockets, an ice axe loop, and a pocket in the lid flap. He rubbed a claw over the label and let out a low whistle. The backpack was paw crafted and paw sewn by the badger geniuses at Sunset Adventures. 
a backpack made by badgers for badgers. Huh, Badger thought. Badger found Skunk in the kitchen with an Orpington. That's a chicken. Skunk sat on the table, twirling a pencil in his claws. The chicken stood on the tabletop. They studied Skunk's chart. The Orpington right-eyed the chart, left-eyed the chart, and tilted her head in Skunk's direction. Bok, bok, bok. She pecked the chart. The paper jumped. Excuse me, Badger gestured toward the hallway. That backpack. Badger, good. Skunk jabbed the air with the pencil. Do you have plates, cups, and two sporks? I need your equipment list. Also, you said you had an extra sleeping bag. I will use it. Sleeping bag, equipment list. Got it. Now, about that backpack in the hallway, Badger paused as his eyes snagged on the sight of a cast iron frying pan and a cast iron stew pot. Neither had been in the kitchen earlier. Cast iron? Isn't cast iron heavy? A hefty fire grate leaned against cabinetry. It looked weighty. He felt eyes upon him and found Skunk and the Orpington left eye, right eye, blink, watching. Badger got to the point. Skunk, is that your yellow backpack? The big one in the hallway? Skunk nodded. Innes at the Veginager said I could have it. She said, Skunk, take it off my paws. All it does is take up space. Her idea of a vacation is a view, a bed, and a good book, Badger blurted. Innes is an American badger, skunk. That is a big backpack. The bigger, the better. Who needs a small backpack? Skunk's eyes flashed. And it is yellow with three pockets. It is perfect. You put it on? Oh, yes. It is the best backpack ever. Badger gaped open mouth and decided it was none of his business.